none of us expect any of our fellow officers or prison staff members to be criminals. We don't expect that. We know that the inmates are convicted felons and that they're going to try to do things to cause corruption within the prison system. But when a fellow officer puts and places the honest officers in danger, it really hits home and it hurts. Hi, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe if you like this video. We need to acknowledge that the problem does exist of corruption in our prisons and jails. We need anti-corruption measures put in place and we need to work harder to stop corruption in our prisons and jails. This is a, this is a topic that a lot of prison officials, legislature, a lot of managers, a lot of wardens, a lot of jail administration like to just try to forget about, and not all, but a lot. I've spoken with wardens who have told me we do not have a problem with drugs in our prison. And then I present them four weeks later with a mirage of drug smuggling issues that are going on in their prison. We cannot bury our heads in the sand and pretend this does not exist. Why? Because the safety and security of everyone is at risk. Corruption kills. Corruption places our staff members in danger and it places the inmates that are not involved in the corruption in danger. We have to do something about it. Now, what type of corruption exists that we need to work on? Well, here are a few. How about inmates recruiting gang members? Confirmed cases, one of them right here in Florida that I did when I was a prison inspector. Confirmed cases of inmates recruiting people from the street with no prior record, a clean record. They can pass their polygraphs. They can pass their psychological exam. And if you work in a Florida state prison system, there is no polygraph and psychological exam. So they can easily pass uh, the background check and get in. But they are still members of a gang. And now they've been recruited to come into the prison by inmates for several reasons sexual favors, drug smuggling, weapon smuggling, cell phone smuggling, okay? This is one area of concern. Another area of concern that we must pay attention to and train, 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 train our officers to look for is the many different ways that drugs come into our prison. Letters soaked in chemicals, stamps, on the back of stamps, when they lick the stamps, all types of pieces of clothing that can be soaked now. Now, when I say that, you say, well, where are the inmates getting the uh, materials or the chemicals to soak their clothing in? Well, visitors are soaking their clothing now at home in a drug-induced chemical, liquid chemical, and then they're wearing these clothes to prison visitation, and they're tearing pieces of their clothes off at visitation and giving it to inmates who can later soak the clothing and get the drug out of the clothing. Yes, there are so many ways. There is a maraud of ways that these drugs are coming in to the prison. That's just one way. Through uh, recruitment of gang members by inmates, through visitors, smuggling the drugs into visitation when they can no longer get past the uh, searches at visitation with drugs and they're being caught with drugs in their uh, uh, cavity, body cavities. They're being caught with drugs hiding under their tongue. They're being caught with drugs hidden in their uh, bra or in their underwear or in their pants liners or in their children's uh, diaper. When they can no longer get caught, or when they can no longer successfully smuggle these uh, drugs in in this manner, 
they will then turn to new ways that are always coming about. So we must train, train, train on all these types of corruption. Now, another type of corruption. We don't want to hear it. Many people don't want to hear it. We do not expect our fellow officers to be criminals, but at times we will have some bad apples cross the line and we'll have uniformed officers as well as civilian prison staff begin to bring in items for inmates. Very dangerous, very harmful to everyone that works behind the razor wire. We have some that have a uh, love-lust relationship with an inmate, and they'll bring things to the inmate that the inmate uh, demands, and they'll be blinded by some type of love-lust, and they'll start to have sexual relations with the inmate and bring the inmate contraband. Now, this is very, very dangerous, not only to the person having the relationship with the inmate, but to all the other officers, because we've had cases where the officer or the staff member, the librarian, the, the nurse or whoever decided to cross the line, breaks off the relationship with the inmate. And they inform the inmate, I'm done. No more sex. No more contraband. I'm done. I'm finished. And they go home. Next shift comes on duty. The inmate is irate having a fit of rage and injures an officer on the next shift, even worse, you know, takes a life of an officer, which has happened. This person, this corrupt individual who was having sex and bringing contraband to the inmate is home, sipping on coffee probably, watching TV, while an officer is being injured because of that person. This is why we need to fight corruption and we cannot bury our heads in the sand and pretend like it doesn't happen and say, oh, oh, don't talk about that because it taints the image of the correctional officers. Folks, talking about it and fighting corruption does not taint the image of the correctional officers. What taints the image of the honest correctional officers are these bad apples. Okay, not, and it's going to hit the news anyway. It's going to hit the evening news. It's going to hit the newspapers. Eventually, it's going to come out anyway. So remember, fighting corruption and looking at it and talking about it and finding new measures and risk management and things that we need to do to prevent corruption is definitely not going to taint the image of the honest officer. We're going to have, we are fighting to protect the honest officer and the honest prison staff members. So don't be too scared when you see someone wanting to work hard to fight corruption within the prison and jail system. And you know, the thing is, there's not been a lot of it. History shows there are not many studies or programs on how to fight prison and jail corruption. And there needs to be more. We need to work on this issue because our hardworking, honest correctional officers and, and correctional uh, employees, nurses, librarians, counselors, the ones that are honest and come to work to do their job and do the right thing and follow policy and procedure, we're placing them at risk for safety and security. It's the safety and security of the institution. Corruption also leads to prison escapes. Corruption leads to inmate deaths, which cost the agency thousands and thousands of dollars a year. Corruption leads to deaths within our community when inmates are assisted by a correctional employee and then they escape from the prison and they harm people on the street, the very people that we are put in place to protect. Take your blinders off. It's there. It's not going away. And we must implement new measures, new strategies, and work together to fight corruption within our prisons and jail system to help everyone behind the razor wire. Remember, 
there are families at home waiting for inmates to get home safely. And a lot of these inmates now, whether you like it or not, are not causing any problems. They're there to do their time and go home. It's those uh, gang member inmates, those um, uh, inmates that are from a th security threat group that we need to monitor and we need to watch. And they're the ones trying to manipulate staff members into doing the wrong thing. Now, if you're a staff member and you fall for those manipulative uh, actions, I'm sorry, I'm a little more uh, harder on it. It's your, it's your fault. Yes, we know that you may not have intended to be manipulated in the very beginning, but then you went ahead and fell into the inmate trap of manipulation. We need to train, train, train on manipulation, on ethics, on what to look for when inmates are smuggling drugs or recruiting uh, prison staff to be gang members. We need to learn what to look for during visitation when visitors are trying to pass off uh, contraband, which can now be in the form of clothing, anything. So please, let's all get on the same, on the same uh, ship and let's work hard to fight against corruption. And don't be ashamed to say the word corruption. We must fight it. And to do that, we must talk about it. Thank you, Gary York, True Prison Stories.